How's it going YouTube? In this video we have myself playing a yellow Gabubon deck against Jerumon. So you know there's been a bunch of yellow Agubon out there and Agumon kind of sucks let's be real and Gabumon is the best. So I'm like hey if it works for red why not for blue right? Uh, the idea here is that we're spending extra time playing BT7 so I'm just out there trying to play some new and exciting stuff. Uh, again, I have to apologize for the glare, you know, it's just tough, man, like, I don't want to not show the matches because they're great, uh, but it's, it's hard, sometimes the glare just shows up, and hopefully it's okay. I'm going to try and get a new camera to try and hopefully improve on that as well, so, you know, bear with me, but I hope it's still an enjoyable match for you guys. Uh, so the idea, if you guys have not seen the yellow bond decks, basically is, like, the yellow provides a bunch of, like, heal, recovery, and searching through security. And then you have the power of the bonds to finish the game because like bond of friendship is still insanely strong uh, Since we play blue, we don't have access to like removal that red has but instead we get cool things like ice wall and I play security Digimon. I also play the EX Gabu as you see in the back uh, This is because the inheritable can search for any Gabu or any tamer. It doesn't specify the color uh, Anyway in this game, we're uh, off to a pretty decent start opponent has set up a bunch of tamers though uh, the Cheru build really focuses heavily on the analog boy. I feel like he plays like three. And they really just do so much work for the deck, right? Get an immense value of the Rehimon. And then when the Cheru one finally does that, you know, you have infinite analogs, so you get infinite rookies basically. So the idea is, you know, we'll use their yellow package to chip damage, uh, recover, and then try and finish off with the Gabo. As you see, I also play Rice Graymon as a way to, you know, get those tamers for free. And we can play some uh, level 6 yellow Digimon, uh, so I have Dynasmon and Kasuchimon, both pretty cool, you know, some cool synergy you can do where like, you go into the bond, get rid of your security, and then heal after. So you're gonna see we're gonna go into the Cordramon, I could swing, get Cardro from Upa, and then proc the Inheritable. Uh, in this case it does whiff, but you know, potentially that's like drawing two cards while getting that chip damage. Like, we can use the mat to gain memory and draw, and like, I don't have to, you know, go for the bond until it's gonna be until it's gonna close the game out or we need to like heavily answer the board because again as blue we just don't have the greatest board clear a quarter month survives we go into a so just no hits you know we don't play that many hybrids but it's at least you know a good amount in there uh, and our security is pretty good just because we have access to like you know so much random junk that's good in security i also play tactical retreat which is really good with the security digimon for example if like blue freezes them you can just put them back in security get the heal and then they'll be summoned again right is gonna swing over. Uh, Rehimon is again so strong. I feel like oftentimes the Cherubi decks don't really even have to go into Cherubi. You could just spam and loop the Rehimon over and over, and that's definitely good enough to win games. So he's doing a good job of clearing the board. Uh, the you know Rehi traded over, but you can see like now he can destroy it. Tap the analogs. He's got Mimi as well. So like, look at the value you get out of the Rehimon, right? Like, when you see Chiruidu plays like this, you're like, man, this deck is so good, right? He has the Boko as well, goes into Rihi. So he didn't tap the Mimi because he wanted to swing with the, you know, this Rihi. Went into a quarter moment, which is kind of nice. Uh, but he did pick up the Chiruidu so he could just instantly go into it and clear the quarter moment, uh, Which puts me in a pretty tough spot. We have to do 3 damage, and our deck is really good at doing 3 damage, and then, you know, the one more of the hybrid. But that does require some setup. And right now, just the Cherubi being out there with all those tamers puts in an immense amount of pressure. Luckily, we do have the Flower Gabo in the back to set up potential lethal. Uh, but like I said, you know, we need like a yellow tamer so I can close the game out after. The heal could maybe keep me alive, going for a bit of chip damage. Uh, hitting through the Wishy Agumon is awful there in security. That's absolutely terrible. Because before this, like, you know, Cherubi was scary, but he wasn't going to be bringing back like any rush because he didn't have Bushi, right? So the fact that I gave him the boost in the trash from that security hit is uh, super tragic. But the idea there is that I've put him to two so that we can close the game out with the Gabu Bond, right? That said, if I don't have a memory fixer like TK or we don't get another mat of security, he could also just memory choke me and then I won't be able to go into the Gabu Bond, right? So we're still not in the greatest spot. Opponent definitely did a good job of setting up his tamers. And like I said, just really getting value out of the Rihi. 
Uh, Lightning Pot's a pretty cool card. I like it a lot because there's just so many rookies in the meta, you know. Boko is the main offender, but usually it's like Boko plus like something else, right? The Clam, the Watermelon, Nemon, Gassi. So Lightning Pot can clear multiple rookies, which feels great. And then active in security, so it's just a solid card. I don't play a ton of removal, but Lightning Paw is just, you know, feels great. Okay, hits into a bond. Our security does have, you know, 14 Ks, which is nice. In this case, it's not nice because the Truby dies. Uh, I mean, he might have had a way to proc it on his own anyway. But if he didn't, you know, he just got it for free. You can see Truby dies. He summons like six rookies, which is absurd. Uh, he gets, you know, the Nemon effect as well on top of that. He gets the on-play from all these Digimon, right? So he gets the Lavramon, double Boko. He's got Tamers to work with. You know, the Bushi can rush. So, this game is kind of over. I mean, Lightning Paw is good, but it doesn't even clear all the rookies. Uh, he actually did forget to do the Boko effects. Uh, so, it's going to be a bit delayed, but, you know, Boko is mandatory. We're going to just do it anyway. Yeah, so there's the, you know, top five. At this point, like, he, he sees basically his entire deck. And you get to a situation where, like, your hand is probably bigger than your deck, right? <laughs> it's pretty funny how it works out, like. And you can see how quickly he got into the the Cherubi. Uh, he had played that Koichi that turn, so that Koichi can't attack. Goes into the mat instead. So, I don't know, this game is, is, is rough. We, uh, you know, the Bushi and then... I guess he doesn't have any more attacks. I'm pretty sure he could have won this turn. Uh, but instead he's gonna just clear the board. Give me three to work with. So funny enough, he does it into a TK and like, if we have the bond of friendship, we still win this game. It's actually pretty funny. After all that, like, we still go bond of friendship in the game. Uh, that said, I, I don't believe I have the bond of friendship. Which means that we lose the game. So, kind of an interesting situation where like, I think he... Misplay is not the right word, but I think he could have set himself in a better situation from that last game, based on how insane his turn was. And yet he wasn't able to win the game. And then he gives me a chance to win the game, except that we don't have the card to close it out. So we can't win the game. All we could really do is try an Ice Wall to buy some time. You know, having access to Ice Wall is pretty good. Uh, but realistically, even through the Ice Wall, like, bro, he's got <laughs> so many Digimon. <laughs> Uh, he did have to digivolve over the mat, so I think the idea here is that maybe we, can, we can maybe memory choke him. But because I don't have a yellow tamer, it's super tough for me to get a hybrid. The idea is that I was going to put him to one with a tactical retreat, but hitting mat in the last security means that there's now absolutely no way we can win the game. So some very unfortunate security hits for me. Hitting that... Bushi was bad, and then hitting the mat at the end was just Omega Sag. Uh, but that, that's gonna be game. He can, you know, proc his analogs, get 50,000 memory, and that's that's game. Uh, so that's game one. Pretty interesting stuff. You can see how the Gabu deck works, or it's supposed to. It's, um, it's fun. I recommend it if you guys are, you know, like me, just trying to play different stuff in BT7, since the format has been extended. Uh, sometimes you know you know might get these bricky hands. It definitely happens when you play a dual dual colored deck like this that is not like inherently meant to go together. Uh, and sometimes stuff flows really well and it just feels nice. If anything, I think playing these decks kind of shows me the power of yellow hybrid in general and sort of like how splashable it is, right? Like you could play, let's say, four Soes, you know, level four hybrids, Jet Sylphie, and like. That engine just works. It's good and it works. It's very powerful, right? And then you have room to fill the rest of your deck with whatever you want. Could be just about anything, right? So just, just think about that, I guess. <laughs> As we see, Yellow Hybrid will stick around past BT7 for sure. Uh, going into game two. Starts off with an analog. Like I said, his deck very heavy into the analog. He gets a ton of value out of them. We have the Flower Gawu. Gonna go into the Cordramon, and might be one of those hands where I just have like a bunch of yellow hybrids and no tamers or something like that. So we just hard drop a Cordramon to draw two. The idea here is like the draw two should hopefully fix my hand. And I think it's early off into the game and he didn't have a purple tamer established. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna give him some memory for sure, but he probably can't do that much with it. Uh, so he's gonna use the memory to just cycle through his deck, which seems like a pretty solid play. Developing the Koichi to have the purple tamer and then Lavramon. 
Uh, I don't think we see Lava Rondo too much in his deck, but in a case like this, it's pretty good where he just has to spend some memory. And then he's gonna just use the Death Cloud to clear the body. So we could do the swing. And then now we do have a Yellow Tamer going to the TK. Uh, sometimes TK does hurt us because we just we play a good amount of blue cards. Uh, but hey, I, I think it's fun, right? Like it's exciting to take that risk. And like I still want TK to be my memory tamer instead of like Davis because I only play yellow hybrids. We don't play blue hybrids. Dress Digivolve of Koichi into Koichi, which is not a legal play, but you know it's it's funny more than anything else. Like just a <laughs> pretty obvious mistake, but it'd be like that. Uh, Rehimon is gonna come out. We hit into an ice wall, but I let him know it doesn't activate because it's Gassimon. Uh, so it would have been a great check in security, but you know, Gassimon is too good. And he goes into a, what I would consider a pretty early Cherubi, but it's still really good because, like, he's clearing my body, getting, you know, Cherubi established, which is already a big threat, and getting our Tamer. Uh, plus, the Mimis make it awkward for me to play, you know, options. So, honestly, early Cherubi putting in work. I think it's a great play from him, and he can just sit in the Gassimon. We're forced to Digivolve over the TK, which hurts. Uh, getting the recovery is nice, but you know, losing that TK hurts a ton. And then at one memory, we're gonna just swing. I still need to do chip damage to be able to close the game out. It's still, you know, how we're going to win this game. I definitely play with a play to win mindset instead of, you know, avoiding losing, if that makes sense. So we take risks and we play two lines that lead to me winning, that lead to me winning which in this case is doing chip damage, setting up the Gabu Bond, right? So that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we hit into an Air Drummond security, one of my other security Digimon. Uh, I don't play as many as Quartermon because Quartermon is just better, obviously. Uh, but you know, Air Drummond is still nice. It still does everything that Quartermon does. We can still retreat it back in the deck as well. Hit into a retreat, which is just heal. Retreat is a pretty insane card. Security effects are just absurd. And it's just pretty funny and just good in general. Gonna go into a Boko. So we get to the point where it gets kind of scary, right? Cherubi, we see the Bushi in the trash, so it's like, at any moment we could die, basically, right? Uh, because of the Aerodromon, we actually have extra attacks, but because we're both at 3 security, I didn't get extra memory from the TK and Kari. If that had been a TK, we might have been able to go for game, but you know, it wasn't, so it's, it's kind of awkward. I can promote the Agu, I mean the Gabu, but we'll only be at 2 memory, which is not enough to do the plays that I want to do. So I think the idea might be to just wait another turn. Gotta check his trash, see what could happen if Cherubi uh, is deleted, which is super scary as I was saying. He has three bodies on the board, Boko, Tamers, like I could definitely die if I don't do something, right? So I think the only play that I have, which is not a great play, but it is a play to keep me alive, is to play Lightning Paw to clear both his rookies. Uh, now he makes the mistake here of not tapping his Mimis because he definitely could have. Would have gained an extra 2 memory for his turn, and then the Mimis would have instantly restood. Uh, but I guess he just forgot about it. But you know, you gotta be careful. Those Mimis are super good. It's such a good tamer. If you play Mimi, just, you know, be aware of it. So, we clear the rookie so I don't die next turn. And maybe next turn I, I'm set to 2 security and we can go for the Gabu play. Uh, I think, you know, from his perspective, all he has to do is put me to 1. Not hit like a, a memory fixer in security. And eventually he'll be able to close the game out, right? Because he's very, very close. So he's gonna Digivolve into the low E. Uh, this is tough, he puts himself to zero. For this position it's hard to just spend one memory, unless he wants to like Digivolve by Kaiser Lee on top of the low E. And this Digivolution, I guess he can also go into a Rehimon, right, to be fair. But he actually just puts an analog to put me to 2. Uh, I think this is a huge misplay because now we have enough to go to 3 with the mat and I can go into the bond. Bond, uh, you know, will trash my security but we can swing 3 times. I bottom deck his stuff. We could technically hit into a jack raid which he does play and that might, you know, lose me the game but we have to just go for game. There's no, there's no other play. We get 3 swings because we have the flower boy and that's game 2 going to us. Uh, so really, really close game. Our opponent did have some misplays there, you know, if he maybe tapped the Mimis, he'd be in a better spot. And I think he had to just not put him into two memory there. At the same time, if when we hit the TK and Kari, you see there was a, there was a TK in my security, right? Like, that had been TK, we would have just won there anyway. So, it happens, but it was a close game nonetheless. Uh, now at this point, I know that we don't have a ton of time left in round. There might only be like, I think it was like 12 minutes or so. So, 
uh, not wanting to go to time, we try and play this game a little bit faster. But it's been a good match so far, I hope you guys have been enjoying it. And the glare is really not that bad. This is an insane start. Opening Gabu and TK is like exactly what I would want. Super solid stuff. He's gonna go with the Boko. Boko's so strong. Gets the Rihi. Again, Rihi just a powerhouse for Chirubi deck for sure. I'm gonna pass, set in the mat. We both have Emery Tamers. Uh, so my first Gabu, or you know, the first Gabu or two is not gonna go for game. It's just chip damage and draw from the Upa. We're able to clear his Boko and set up another Tamer. Uh, he doesn't have a Rookie, which is definitely going to slow him down a little bit. And I made sure to just clear the Boko as soon as possible to not have to deal with that. Especially because, you know, he had the Rihi. But he has to pass, which is less than ideal for sure. We have another Flower Gabu. And since we had a second Tamer, we're able to go into another one. Uh, we're just swinging again. It's all about getting that chip damage. And then setting up for the Gabu, triple swing into hybrid game. So this time he does go into the Rihi. Finally picks up a Rookie as well, so things are looking a lot better for him. Uh, he doesn't see a Dynas, which kills the Rihi, but honestly, you're more than okay when your Rihi uh, dies, right? Like, it, you almost expect them to die. Uh, that said, though, you know, through the chip damage, we've gotten our opponent down to 3, which is, you know, how much the Gabu Bond does, and then we're just gonna hybrid after. For this play, we do need 5 memory, uh, which just really requires us to have essentially 2 mats on the board. Our opponent is set us to 4, something like that. He goes into a low A. Uh, so at this point, this Gabu is going to win the game. So we're not going to promote until we're going for game. So my play is just set up another mat. That way I will have 5 memory to work with next turn. And I don't have a way to pass turn without giving him a lot of memory. So we actually just pass. Usually passing is like the worst play you can do in Digimon. But in cases like this, it's uh, it's definitely correct, right? Like, hard drop in a level 4 or something, and giving him 5 or 6 memory to work with, uh, I think would just be an inferior play, especially when we are set up for lethal next turn. So he goes into the lowy. He can, you know, keep looping the Rihi. Uh, but at, at this point, it's, it's just not going to be enough. It's just not that much pressure. If he has a Gassi, the Gassi doesn't stop the memory game from the mats. So... He doesn't really have great plays at this point, debating on what he should do. Like, he goes into a Rebelli, except that if you play BT6, you know, Rebelli just doesn't do anything against Gabu Bond, this, we could just bottom deck it. So I go to 5, we draw 2, we go into the Bond, we trash my top to security, but I can swing 3 times, bottom deck his entire board, uh, and then, you know, we're gonna have a hybrid to go for game after. And hey, that's the power of Gabu Bond, right? Like, it's still an insane, and I mean insane card. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that game. Thanks for watching.